If you're anything like me, you might have encountered a feeling like this before. You're just sitting down one day, playing some video games, and you think, hey, I'm playing video games now, but what if I could make them? Maybe your next thought was, no, that's stupid, I'm gonna go back to winning Valorant games. Or maybe you took that one thought, you made it your life dream, and now you work at Ubisoft. Or maybe you're at the start of your journey, wanting to know where to begin. Maybe you even tried some coding on your own, and you're saying to yourself, oh well it's cool I learned about if statements and while loops and all these other cool little things, but how do I use those to make a game? Regardless of who you are, I guarantee you will by the end of this video become a better developer. Unless you already know all this stuff, looking at you Mr. Senior Engineer working at Epic Games. So, what's the secret? What's the one thing that's gonna magically turn you into a better developer? Yeah, well, here it is. Your ability to write code doesn't matter, but your problem solving skills do. Now let me explain myself when I said that writing code doesn't matter. Obviously, coding matters. If you don't know how to write code, then you literally can't make anything. But it shouldn't matter what language, what game engine you're using. You should be focusing on the skills that transcend what tech stack you're using. And the most crucial of those skills is problem solving. When it comes to something like game development or anything to do with software, things become a million times easier if you have the ability to break down a puzzle into logical chunks, the ability to take a puzzle and solve it with the pieces you have on hand, the ability to take dreams and weave them into tangible ones and zeros. Sorry to pause the video here, but I have a few announcements to make. Due to popular demand, my game is now up on itch.io, link in the description below. And in addition to that, I also have a Patreon. Every little bit helps, it's also I can push for more time on coding Ratatosker. Anybody who donates on either itch.io or Patreon will be credited at the end of every video. And don't forget to join my Discord, it's very active and we have conversations about life, game development, anything really. It's a fun place to be. That's all, back to the video. Back to this oh-so-magical skill of problem solving. Why do you need it? Well, to put it simply, programming is quite literally problem solving. You are taking a problem, for example could be anything low level, like how do you add two numbers together? Or anything high level, like how do I combine racing game mechanics and card game mechanics for the ultimate fast-paced Mario Kart Hearthstone hybrid gaming experience everyone wants? Regardless of what the motivation is for when you boot up your favorite development environment, there is guaranteed to be one or more problems that you're trying to solve. Now here lies the question, how do you solve the problem given to you? Well, by writing code, of course. What code do you have to write? Well, therein lies the difficulty. So here's what I'm going to teach you in this video. I'll be going through the different steps I usually take in order to solve any given problem. These will be 1. Identifying the problem, 2. Breaking down the problem, and 3. Solving the problem. Identifying the problem. You know that old adage, measure twice, cut once? Well, what it's saying is that planning is the most important step to executing any action. This especially applies to programming. Everything you skip at the stage of identifying and planning out the problem will almost always result in writing code that accrues technical debt, meaning that it will be code that won't be fun to work with again. Now what do I mean about identifying the problem? Well, to me, fully identifying and understanding a problem means that you can fully describe it and be able to elaborate on any questions people have about your description. Uh, let's use the basic example I mentioned in the intro, how to add two numbers together. How would you describe this problem in a statement? Pause here if you want to try this exercise yourself. Well, here's my first attempt at a problem statement. Given that I have two numbers, I will add the two numbers together and what I have in the end is the result. You might be thinking, well that's just a more verbose version of saying I'm just going to add two numbers together. Aha, uh -huh, but there's an important distinction. The statement identifies the input, being two numbers, what I need to process the input, add the two numbers together, and the output what I have in the end of adding those two numbers together. Because of how computers work, splitting a problem into its input, process, and output, if done well, can make it incredibly easy to directly convert your problem into code. Here's a little example of my problem statement turned into a C-sharp function. See this here is the input, the arguments of the function, this is the processing, the body of the function, and this is the output, denoted by the return statement. This bit I'll touch on more in the solving the problem section. Every problem can be identified in this way, even non-programming ones too. For example, washing the dishes. I input dish soap, a sponge, a sink, some dirty dishes, and my process is that I use the sponge to scrub the dishes using dish soap, and then rinse them off with water from the sink. And my output are cleaner dishes. The goal now, when you see a problem, is to think about if you can translate these inputs and outputs into data types, and the processing into code. This is where your coding knowledge comes in. 
What data types do you have available in your programming language? How can they be used to represent the problem? Let's look back on the adding two numbers example and rework the problem statement to include what type of data I'm inputting and outputting. Given that I have two decimals, I will add the two decimals together and it shall return a decimal which represents the sum. Now, we made a distinction for the data which can be translated directly into c -sharp. Since before, the statement specified numbers, which could mean any range of c -sharp data type, integers, floats, doubles, decimals, longs, shorts, etc. Specifying which data type for the problem helps us even more. And now, we have reshaped the problem to be more specific about data, and we can translate it better into code. Here is the new function. Notice the input types are both decimals and the output type is also a decimal. Evaluate why you want a specific data type for your problem too. I chose decimals because I figured it would provide more flexibility for anyone wanting to add anything that either is or isn't a whole number. Even the silly example of washing dishes can be translated into code this way if you have a knowledge of object-oriented programming. Here's an example of a function signature which represents this example but object-oriented programming is a huge lengthy topic for another time. Let me know in the comments if you want me to start a series on it. Now what if my problem's too big to be translated directly into code? Or maybe you tried solving the problem and you're finding it really difficult to understand your own code. Well, this is where step two comes in. Breaking down the problem. Now this, this is where programming starts to get real. I always say that your job as a programmer is to make your own job easier. Each function in your code represents one problem to solve, with its own inputs and outputs, and functions can be reused, which means that if you break up your problems correctly, you only need to solve each problem you come across once. And when you come across the same problem again, you can just reuse the function without copy-pasting the code within. This follows one of programming's great principles, DRY, which stands for Don't Repeat Yourself. Break up your problems well enough, and you'll amass a whole library of solutions you can use and reuse to snowball your software into something powerful. Let's find an example of a problem that's maybe a bit too big to digest in one go. Making a basic calculator, where you can input any two numbers and see the result printed on the screen. Now you've probably seen programs like this before, and here's what it's gonna do. First, it'll ask you for the first number, you'll type in the first number, then it'll ask you for the second number, you'll type in that second number, and once that is done, it'll print out the result. Now, this isn't just one function, this is now one whole program that you run on your computer that you, the user, can interact with. But let's try to describe it in a way that we did before in the identifying a problem stage. You might say that it's the exact same problem statement. Given that I have two decimals, I will add the two decimals together and she'll return a decimal that represents the sum. However, this omits a lot of details. Let's rework the inputs, process, and outputs of this problem. So the inputs are 1. The first decimal, which is entered using the keyboard, and then 2. The second decimal, which is also entered using the keyboard. The processing stage involves adding the two decimals together, and the output is the sum of the two decimals printed on the screen. The problem has become ever so slightly different, and in turn becomes difficult to describe in just one statement. Our inputs are different because we have to supply them through a specific method, through keyboard input. Our output is also slightly different, and needs to be displayed on the screen. So deceptively, this one problem seems to have a whole host of sub-problems that come with it. So, we need to break the problem down. This step usually comes with experience and precursor knowledge of what you can and can't do through code. Here's how I would break the problem down. Given we have a keyboard, whatever is typed into the keyboard should be transformed into data that can be used in the program. Given we have keyboard information, we need to transform it into a decimal. Given we have two decimals, we need to sum them and then return the result. Given we have one decimal, we need to print it out onto the screen. Overall, each problem can be solved one at a time. Now let's go to step three, solving the problem. Let's start with the first sub-problem. Maybe you don't actually know how to code this in the programming language you're using. That's all right, because we have the power of Google. Because the problem is broken down so nicely, you can take it and search for it. You'll definitely find something online for the programming language you're using. This is another one of those vital skills that comes with programming, the ability to find knowledge if you don't know something. And it in of itself 
is a form of problem solving. The problem being that you don't know how to do something, and the solution being to identify what you don't know and find it in documentation or other sources. After some googling, turns out a lot of programming languages come inbuilt with a read line function that takes anything you type into the console and turns it into something you can store in a variable. In C Sharp, it just so happens that there already exists a lovely function that solves this problem, console.readLine. Okay, program is looking good. We have our first line of code which should hopefully solve the first problem. Now we go on to the next subproblem, turning this bundle of characters we got from the keyboard, what we call a string, into a decimal. If we google this as well, rinse and repeat, you'll find, wow, there's already a function that does this conversion from a string to a decimal. Because we solved the first two subproblems, that's the first chunk of our program done. You can repeat that solution for asking for the first number, then asking for the second number. We can also abstract this away to another function. Because these two subproblems happen to be solving a problem of its own, which is asking for a decimal from a user, this reduces our code duplication, and now we have one centralized place to debug if our code breaks. Now let's try and solve the third subproblem taking two decimals and summing them to produce another decimal. Well, if you remember the function I showed you all the way in the identifying a problem section, we can use it just like so. Creating a function to add two numbers might be overkill, but for the sake of education and to get into the mindset of seeing everything in inputs and outputs, let's keep it like this. Now the final problem. We need to take a decimal and print it out to the console. Turns out, this is also a one-liner. A simple console.writeLine call will do. Now we have our overall solution. Allow me to demonstrate by executing this program. And hey presto! It takes a bunch of decimals and adds them together. Now I missed the secret fourth step, and that's reflection. Ask yourself, does this really solve the problem? To what standard? I won't be going over this step because I want you to try this at home. Is there anything wrong about how I solve this problem? What are the limitations of the code I just wrote? Write in the comments below what you think I could have improved on in this code. In conclusion, this process allows us to take a specification and turn it into a set of problems to solve. And because the problems are so easily digestible, we were able to find the solutions even with gaps in our knowledge. Hopefully this is a valuable glimpse into how you should be applying problem solving and programming. Like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one.